Hello and welcome once again on this Monday afternoon. I can see loads of people are joining us already, so um, thanks for joining me. I can see we've got some new people as well. Some Christy's in from Texas, so you're up early, aren't you, today? But thank you very much for joining us. If anybody doesn't know me already, let me introduce myself. My name's Simon Williamson, and I'm here from Avago Week Designs. Um, we do this show every Monday at the same time to give you some inspiration with Avago products. If you haven't already, like the channel and um, hit the subscription button, and you'll get notified of any news that's coming up about our lovely brand and our lovely products that are going to be launching soon. So as soon as I can tell you more about that, I will do. But it's lovely to see you. Let's have a look who else is on. So we've got Roxy Leon, Bridget. Hello. So Donna's in Kent today. So I like to know where you all live. It's um, interesting. We've got Denise on, uh, Tracy, Maureen. Bridget, I don't, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've missed anybody now. It goes so fast sometimes. Welcome anyway, wherever you are, wherever in the world, it's nice to have your company. So we're going to do some two demonstrations today. The first one, I'm really impressed with, and I think you'll like it as well. So it's a really colourful card that has a hidden feature. So this one's called a wiper card. So when you pull the card up, you can see you get a hidden element to it, and it disappears in the card. So it's really good for posting so it's flat. But when you pull those side parts, you get a hidden little extra of a little star shooting out of this one, but you can adopt this to whatever style that you want. So let's get started and we'll make this one. So the first thing I've done is I've cut two pieces of card. And I'll just check the measurements in case you want to make this. But it's five inch by 10 inch, so two pieces that are five inch by 10 inch. And we're going to score these at one end at one and a half and three inches. So let's just go down there. Let's go down there. And let's just create those folds. You're going to do a valley on the first one. I'll just turn that way a little bit. Valley on the first one and then a mountain on the second one. And that's going to give you the kind of edge that you need. So I'm just going to crease those down with a bone folder. Make sure they're nice and tight those. And we'll do exactly the same for the second piece. It's a really fun card, this one, isn't it, um, Roxalee? So have a go um, and uh, adapt it to what stamps you've got in your collection. So one and a half and three again on this piece. Move the scoreboard out of the way now. And same as before, the value than a mountain. So we just crease those down, make sure we've got those nice and tight into his card. We've got some people watching on Facebook as well. So we've got Sharon on, Julie, um, Marion. Hello, everybody. Oh, I wonder where you're all from as well. We've got two pieces then folded exactly the same way. And what we're going to do is we're going to revert one over to create our box. And then when we glue these together, you can see it's going to give us that kind of design that then it will concertina flat. And that's going to be the mechanism that we're going to use for this wiper card. So you can see it folds the lovely shape there. So let's start off with this panel here. I'm going to use some red liner tape just because I want to make sure it doesn't move. So I'll turn it over. I'm going to run it down this edge here. So nice big piece of red liner tape. Make sure I get this secure. Just take that back enough. And then a little bit of wet glue on this outer edge just to hold this flat. And I'm just going to turn that bit over. Just line it up there. I'm just going to put the, the wet glue bit down just at the second. Just to make sure we line up nice at this other side as well. And then push that tape down. And that, cuts, that creates our join on that side. So we've got our first bit done there now. That's lovely. Uh, and Sharon's um, left a comment. So thanks for having the confidence to join that um, comment for us there. It's really nice for you to make comments as well. So it helps other people as well. And if you've got any questions, put the QQ at the beginning and it helps me spot them as well. So it goes so quite fast. 
So Donna's put, how big was the card? I missed that bit. So these two pieces of card are 10 inch by 5 inch. And then these kind of fold down then when they're folded to like a 5 by 7 card. Do 5 by 7 on this mat? I'll just do it this way. So 5 by 7, so they'll fit in with an envelope really nice. I'll do it that way because probably see it a bit better on camera. So if you don't want to put the star sticking out like I did on this design, just that makes it slightly bigger, you see, with these little stars at the edge. You can do it in a 5x7 envelope, but that's entirely up to you how you want to personalise it. So we've got our two bits done now. So now we need the actual wiper mechanism. So what I've done for that is I've just cut a strip. Now I'm going to use acetate, but I know that's really hard to see on camera, so I've done it in orange card just to show you. So you need to make a strip, and this one's just a bit over 5 inches by just a bit under 2 inches. And then I've used my scoreboard. Just to pop a little mark at just under one and a half inch. You can see just one notch before it. And then I turned it over and I did exactly the same on the back, the one notch before. And then you can use that then as a markup for the line. And you're going to groove down that line and that's going to create the hinge of your actual wiper card mechanism. And you're going to fold that back and forth and make sure it's really pliable. And then that's what's going to give you the actual moving part to your card. So, I've done exactly the same, but I've done it with acetate. So I'm going to swap to the acetate one now while I just stick this in place. And I'll just... So I've put some double-sided tape on this corner, which is the bit that we've done the actual fold line on. Let's remove the backing of that. I've come prepared today, so it came off. And the reason we did just a little bit under um, that one and a half is so that we don't actually affect this in here. So we're going to stick this on our card just slightly about the halfway mark kind of area. And we're going to do it level with this edge here. So I'll take that right up, stick that down, push that down, make sure that's all going to fold over. And at this stage, you can just check that it's not going to actually stick out the bottom of your card. Or it's going to hinder the top corner. So that's fine. And then. If you can see, I don't know if you can see on there, but you can see the actual acetate panel does come up. Put a bit of red there. Oh, there you can see it on there, can't you? You can see then that you can check it's working before you stick the other edge of your cards together. You can see that's popping up there, lovely. Right. So now we need to secure this side of his card. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to put a red line of tape down the end strip. Trim that off. Take that back enough. Come on, there we go. And just a little bit of wet glue down this edge just to hold this bit down. This is the bit that you're pulling, you see. Then we're going to lay it flat, and then that way it's going to line up as best as we can. Push that down, and then you can make sure you've got no kinks in your card, then that's lovely. And that's how a box card made. So all we need to do now is decorate it and give a little bit of a dimension to this. So let's start with this front panel here. So I'm going to do these in a blue tone, so it's a little bit different from the first card. And I've brought our lovely sprinkle die from the Avago range. This is that big full panel die that gives you all these little details, little stars, sprinkles, and little circles. I'm going to die cut this out of a pale blue. So let's get this through the die cutter. Oop, nearly went wrong way then. So put that down. Cover the die, and then run that through. I love this die. I think it's a really good way of getting an impact on your card, I really do say. So Sheila says she's just joined, and this looks interesting. Well, you'll have to watch it now and see what it does at the end, Sheila. Let's just take that off. Back to one side. Move them plates out of the way. And just look at all that lovely detail that gives us now in that panel. And that's going to make that blue just pop through in the background. Let's get this glued into place as well. And with this die, there's enough firm area to put the glue around the edge and it not seep through your design. I'm just going to just put a nice fine line all the way around. And then just, just put a few bits in the middle but I've got some open card space. 
There we go. So let's put this onto this panel first. And I've cut this just a bit smaller than five by seven, so I've got that nice blue border going around the edge of it. So let's give that a good push down, make sure that's secure. And then to decorate these bits, I've just cut another panel of this already and just chopped two little strips look, that can go onto there and that'll continue to design, that design on. Let's get them glued into place. I bet this would look nice in that, um, the fish scale die that we do as well. Let's pop that one over there. And we'll do the same with this middle panel. Bit of glue. Take that off. It's just there we go. And pop that over there. Let that grab a second. So you can decorate the back of the card if you wish. But I've left mine plain. But what would be a good idea on this one is to put like a panel for you to write on. You could put a little sentiment, a little message there if you want to. But for the purpose of this this card, I'm just going to leave it on the. You can see a nice big panel here saying to and from, and any message you want to put, good place to put it. But I'm just going to decorate the front from this point of view. So I suppose push that down, make sure it's all sitting lovely. There we go. This mechanism's working. So I'm going to put that to one side. We're going to get some stars now. So I've chosen like a silver glitter, and I've also got this base blue as well. So we're just going to cut some stars out of, and then they're going to create our background for our sentiment and our character. Let's just pop that down the right way up. That can go over that side. And that can go over there. We'll just pop that through as die cut. You could always cut these shapes, I use circles, squares. I just thought the stars lended itself to like their celebration kind of effect on the card. So Sheila says the fish scale die is lovely. I know it'd be nice, wouldn't it? I just don't think I could glue it fast enough on um, demo. <laughs> Let me just pull these bits out. There we go, we'll move them stars out of the way. I'm just going to glue this on top of the silver to give it a nice funky border that sticks out. So, a bit of wet glue on this. And let's put too much glue on. Onto his glitter card. Give that a good push down. I love a matte and light. It really does bring out the actual detail, doesn't it? And I've already pre-cut some smaller ones, so let's get these glued together while we're at this state. So same again, just, just going to put these on top of the corresponding mats that I've done. <laughs> Could use a bit of tape run as well just to secure it until that glue grabs, but I think we'll be all right. Give that a good push down. Last one. And push that into place. And then we've got our lovely set of glittery stars. We'll just pop them to one side just to be drying now a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build our character. So we're going to use our lovely elephant in this one. And I didn't want to like watercolor it, I wanted to do something quite fast. I'm going to do with the paper piece, piercing method. I've got a lovely kind of textured grey piece of card, it's got a little bit of a, like a texture in the background, and that's just going to add to our little um, character, give a bit more depth. Let's pick that up. I'm going to use the Versafine Black just to bring that stamp detail out. Oop. Give that a good push down. It's so cheeky, this one, I tell you. 
Give that a good push down because it's textured paper. Just want to make sure we get all the detail. That's lovely. Our little character die cut out. I brought the outline die that comes with the kit. I think this is from the Elephantastic one, but there is two, so I just have to have a look which one it came from. And then we just bring our plates back in so we can die cut this fella out. Let's run him through. And I'm going to redo the stamp, but I just want his ears and that heart there. So I'm just going to put it onto a scrap of pink card that I've got. Same with the texture, just it adds to it a little bit more. And I'm just going to... It's a good way of using your coloured scraps as well, this. So I'm just going to make sure I've got his ears and its heart all cut out. Just pull that out a second. There we go. I'll just bring in our die cut friend. As you can see, we've got a lovely outline around him in grey. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to chop out the ears and the heart and mat them on top, and it'll just give you some instant colour. It's a really quick way of doing um, simple cards, this. Great for kids as well, because they can do this ahead and have fun making colourful elephants. We'll just turn that around a little bit. Just chop around this one. Around this other ear. And now I'm going to do that little love art as well. Did anybody see the um, sneak peek the other day of um, Emma on Thirsty Brush? She's got some new products launching, hasn't she? I think she's on Creating Craft tomorrow at 7 and 11. So it's worth catching up with that if you want to have a look. She's got a completely different style. But a lot of her products go well with these characters as well. So go and have a look um, and catch the shows if you can. Even if you just want to record them for inspiration. She's uh, really talented. Bless her. Let's get rid of that. So I've got his two ears and his little heart, so I'm just going to cut these glued on now. So, just a little bit of glue on this side. Just pop those over. And it instantly makes this elephant come to life, look. And his little love art. Push that down, make sure it's sticking. There we go. There we go. So we've got a lovely little elephant in his little costume, pink ears and his little pink heart, and he's going to be one of our characters on our cards. Just so we don't have to um, spend too much time, I've also done the head of the bigger elephant. So you can see I've just done exactly the same. Oops, I'll say that way. Exactly the same. I've just taken the body off it, though. So I've done his ears, so that's going to be part of our elements when we assemble. So I'm just going to bring in the stamping platform once again. And we're going to get our main sentiment done now. So I prefer to do the um, sentiment first and then die cut after. But I know some people out there like to do it the opposite way. They die cut the shape first and stamp into it. But whichever way you prefer, you do it the way that you feel comfortable with. I'm going to go for the big banks. Nice black ink on that one so it pops. Make sure we've got all that detail. There we go, we'll just take that out. Bring in my um, die plates again. So I'm going to use this then as a, a border, so make sure it's in there. I'm just going to get some low pack tape just to make sure it doesn't slip. Just 
the traces are established where you can still go over to the children's cards. I think they're really fun characters, aren't they? I'm glad you like them, though. They make me um, smile, and that's what they're there for. So we'll just run this through. This is our sentiment for our main card. And then we'll start assembling the card and show you how to that wiper element that pops up. So Christy says, loving the stamp platform. It's massive, isn't it, Christy? It's really, um, it's the um, workhouse, the workhorse, sorry, of the actual cards I make. I love the um, Eureka. You'll have to treat yourself to one if you haven't already got one. There we go. So I'm just going to mount this onto a bit of silver glitter. Go there, just to fetch it out a little bit more. And then I've got some foam pads. So let's get that with a bit of height on top of this first star. So a big thanks can go there. I'm going to bring in our main element of this card. So I think we're going to glue this in this top corner. So let's go, let's go about there, I think. Push that down. And then we've got a star that can be hanging off the side. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this part. And then stick that down there. Just make sure you can actually fold the card as well so it's not too close to this crease edge. But that's absolutely fine. And then we're going to have another one, this top corner. And then let's have our sitting down elephant coming at the bottom here, just to give a little bit of cuteness to it, really. A little bit of a character. There you go, look. Big thanks with his love art. And if we pull this now, our acetate strip comes up. And I'm going to put a little bit of red liner tape just at the top here, just so we can make sure it grabs this properly. You could do it with a strip of card as well. You don't have to do it with acetate. I just think it looks a little bit um, more mysterious when you can't see how it's attached. Let me just get my scissors on that so I don't want to let go. There we go. I'm going to pop that uh, about there, I think. You just want to give it, before you push it down, you just want to make sure that that folds in. So just make sure your mechanism works fine. It does. And you can see it's just that, it's just catching a bit there. So I've got time just to move it down a little bit. There we go. Push that into place. I'm going to stick the elephant on top then. Come over that star. I'm just going to oh, let that grab a second. Just putting them little st spikes of the star back a little bit so they don't catch. Give that a second. And then that should fold perfectly in there. There you go. Got the big reveal now, look. So if I stand that up, so we've got our lovely card, which looks lovely on its own anyway. But then when you pull this, you're going to have our friend little elephant coming up on a star. So Tracer, would you consider doing some crocodile stamps and puns? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to have a snappy think about that one, won't I? See if I can come up with anything. So I hope you enjoyed that. And you can see it works really well in both colorways as well. So you could do it in your pinks and your blues. And I'm sure you've got some stamps in your collection you could have a play around with this one with. Uh, be nice with some flowers, like a bunch of flowers coming out as well. And if you've got the time as well, you could actually do two wipers so that you get two things coming out at the same time. Um, but just for today's demo, I went with one, so I think that's enough to learn. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to do, um, give you some inspiration now from the Other Go channel, I'll tell you a little bit about what it's all about while I set up for my second demonstration. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. See you later. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. So Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. 
I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together, and make something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and there's little owl collection and the main crux of the actual design is there's a big image there and little characters you can play around have fun and there's always some puns in there as well so you can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products is don't be afraid just buy any of the kits that you I mean you feel like you want to and you'll always create a really good card from there there's some good characters good sentiments and some really fun images in there so just just grab one and have a go. So I'm glad you enjoyed that one. I can see from the comments you did, so that's good. Donna says the list is getting longer and longer. I think all crafters have that long list, I've got to say. But it's nice, isn't it, though, when you see inspiration, you think, I can do that with my products. You don't always have to build it by the whole collection. So this next one's quite a simple card. I think it's quite a fresh-looking card, this one, as well, with these kind of colours. And I base this all around this um, new ink colour that's just launched. So it's in one of the multi-packs that's just come to the um, Out of Craft Network. So have a look and see if that's available. But I just thought it's a lovely colour. And then I designed this card around it using the Avago products. So let's have a go and make this one together. So Christy says, I need the dinos when I can get these. If there are any dinosaurs left, Christy, they will be on the Outer Craft Network channel. So um, I'm sure there might be the odd ones. Have a little look on there. And then we'll um, help you. If not, give me an email and I'll see if we can locate one. So I've got that lovely massive stamp, which is like the firework designs. It's got loads of detail in there, can you see? It's not too closed in, so you've got lots of background areas as well. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp this onto our card. Let's just get that placed over. Excuse the red in the inks, it's from a previous card I made. Pack that up. Turn off a second. Got the anti static bag, so I'm just going to give that a quick rub. Just line that up again. Just a nudge that way. All right, that'll be fine. I ain't, I ain't got anywhere to put my magnets, so I just want to make sure it lines up first. So I'm going to coat it now in this um, lovely, like, kind of, like, aqua teal colour. It's really soft, isn't it? It's summery. So let's give that a good coverage in this colour. Make sure we get all that lovely detail. Just to make sure I've got all those bits there. Just a bit down here. And give that a nice push down. Make sure we get all our fireworks in the position. Pull that off. Look at that. So we've got our design coming together already. I'm just going to bring in a sheet of paper. And I've got some clear embossing powder. It's got a little bit of a glitter in there. I'm going to use this for this demo. Sprinkle that on to make sure we get it all covered. We've got to have a bit of sparkle, haven't we? Let's tip that off. I'm just going to just give that a light tap. That to one side where I just put this back in its container. Go. I'm just going to bring the heat gun in now just to make sure that this bonds to our card stop. So I always find with glittery um, embossing, you just have to do it a little bit longer so it actually adheres to the card. So let's just go around this design, make sure it sticks to it properly. I 
we're a bit out that bit. <laughs> and just going down to the centre. I can see it twinkling as I'm heating it, so I just want to make sure I've got, I've got it all heat set. Okay. It's quite subtle, but if I just angle that towards the camera, I'm sure you'll be able to pick up how sparkly that is. You just tilt it a little bit. See? Well, they can get it on camera. Oh, there you go. You can see it. There you go. It's quite sparkly. It's really fine lines, but it just really adds a little bit more specialness to this card, which is what we're wanting. So that's our backing panel for the card. I've already cut some lovely corresponding cards. So this is a bit of a textured colour, and it goes well with this kind of ink pad that we're using. So that's the thought behind that. So let's get that stuck onto our 5x7 base card first of all. I'm going to use a tape runner for this one. Just, I'm just going to just line up with this opening so I can get it level and push towards the centre. And just remember to turn your card back round or so it ends up being Australian. And I've got a lovely black layer now, which is just going to make that pop a little bit more. So let's get that tape runners into place. I love um, using black as a, a layer, because it really makes your colours pop. So popping that down, push that down so it's nice and secure. And I'm going to glue that into the centre of this panel as well. So we'll go for tape runner again. Just for speed really, you can use wet glue at home if you prefer. And then let's get that mounted so it's all even. That's lovely. So that's our base of our car. So I'm going to put that to one side now. Now I'm going to work on the main element. So this is our little owl in the centre. And then we've got this lovely banner attached to it using the um, Stamps by Me banner cutter. So let's get this built together. So let's start off with the actual uh, banner die cutter. So I've got uh, one strip at uh, one and a half, I think it was. Let me just check. Yeah, one and a half. And I've got the black at two. So I'm going to do the one and a half one first. I'm going to cut the two one. I'm going to glue these on, but I don't want to have such a black border, you can see. So I'm going to just use this and bring it down a little bit to where I want it, the right thickness here, and then we're going to trim the excess off. Let's have a little bit of wet glue going down here. So let's position that where I want it in the centre. There you go. So I'm really happy with this like smaller white border. And I'm just going to bring up a trimmer and we're just going to just reduce this a little bit on the edge. Da, da, da. Do the same on this side. There you go. Just make this a little bit finer, really. I don't want it as chunky. And then we might as well get our sentiment put onto this while we've got our stamping platform. I'm just going to remove the fireworks. And I'm going to use the you are, you are Such a Hoot, which is from the Owl Collection. It's really comical, this one. I like it. So I'm going to put that just towards the end of this um, banner that we made. Use the magnets so we don't move. I'm going to use Versifying Black again. It's my go to ink, I've got to say, but it always gives a crisp kind of result for me. Even on textured paper, I really like the effect you get. 
And there you go. So we've got you are such a hoot. Let's put that to one side. We've got that ready to assemble. And then I've got our little home for our owl. So I've got a black mat and I've got a white layer. So rather than just leave this plain, I'm just going to pop this in. I'm going to bring in our firework kind of effect um, stamp again. I'm just going to just do an area of it. It's got a nice firework design in it. I'm just going to move that. There you go. Give that a push down. I'm not going to emboss this bit. You could do if you want to. I just want to get some of that green on there to break up that piece of card. Just peel that off. There you go. It just adds a little bit more detail to that bit of card, you see? Let's get that glued onto our mat layer. Push that down. So, where's our own newbie? Was it Sharon? How are you enjoying it then, Sharon? Are you even finding this inspirational? Is this something you think you could have a go and do yourself? There we go. So we've got, we've got that and we've got that. So let's get this on our card so we know where it's going to sit. And then we can finish it off with a character at the end. So I always start with this bit first and put this where I want to do it so I can see that that's going to be too long at that edge. Now you might like that. You might want to extend it. It's an to you. It's your card. I'm just going to chop a little bit of this off. Just make it slightly shorter. I think I'm happy with that. You see, it's more central for me. Let's get some foam pads on this just to raise it up a little bit more. Raise that up. Put that towards the center. Put another foam pad just towards this end. That's going to give a little bit of support for our circle. We could put a little bit of glue on this as well. Let's pop that into its place. Push that down. Now we just need one of our lovely characters with the owl that we're going to use. So let's just get. We're going for a big sleepy owl on this one. I love their eyes as well. I think they're so, their expressions are so funny, I've got to say. So this one's like holding a cup of tea. And he's got some, I think some like magazines in his hands as well. So let's just pop that there. Pick that up. I'm going to do stamp them in black to get the detail. Make sure I get all that detail on that watercolor stock. Oh, look at that. Look how much detail there is in that stamp. You can see all the, like, the graduation around his feathers. Look at his sleepy eyes and his big cup. Lovely, isn't he? So let's get a little bit of color onto him now. I'm going to bring in my watercolors for this, I think, just so it's a nice way of giving a pop of color. Get rid of these little bits of card. If you like watercolors, you prefer to alcohol markers. I go through phases, I've got to say. So let's, um, let's get some nice colors on him. I always use this as a palette as well, so I find it's a good way of making sure the color's right before I actually commit to it. Let's get some nice brown around his eyes. Oh, he looks tired, doesn't he? On this one. And then into his, his wings, they can hold his cup. Pushing that through. The top is that as well, I think. And I'm just going to make slightly darker colour up. I think I'm just going to make those eyes pop a little bit more. Just dabbling that around to bring it out a bit more. 
just the tip shows for others. And then let's water that down a bit. And then we can run his tummy. And then I think we need to have a bit of vibrancy now. So we've used this lovely green colour on his card. I'm going to try and replicate this in like a, a watercolour. Let's get some of that green. And then we'll add some of this creamy white to it. Just to tone it down a little bit. A little bit of that darker. I think that's quite a good match. Let's get that in his hair, his hat, sorry. And his little green mug. And then can have some green papers as well, just to tie in his colour theme. And of course, his little slippers look. And let's see if we can just get some little bright orange legs on him. And then finally, let's just go in, give him some really tired eyes look. There we go. We've got our little owl all coloured in now for our card. Let me just get the heat gun on that so it actually dries off. Let's see what you're all chatting about. So I think the see this is I think the answer would be good for teaching stuff and everyone graduating. Yeah, that'd be really good actually. I never thought of that. Quite a wise um, thing, isn't it, an owl, for knowledge, so it's uh, got a good link to it. And then Tracy's but I tend to be more alcohol pen colourist, but with your character, it's much easier to get fur skin tones with the, with the watercolours. Well, that's good, because it's making you try different mediums, isn't it, as well? So I think everybody starts off with the alcohol pens, but they're a good, fast way of doing it, but it's a bit more versatility for your all, isn't it? Um, Roxley says, I smudge the outlines when, when I use watercolours. It's a nice effect though sometimes, isn't it? Just so you don't have that white edge to just bleed it out a little bit. So, well, it's nice that we're all trying different things, isn't it? So that's what it's all about, really. So let me just bring in the die for our owl. Let's pop him over so we get him all lined up. Let's get a little bit of low tack tape. Make sure that's in the right position. Tight line to place. And we'll just run that through our cutter. The weather's going to be like this afternoon because it's a little bit dreary at the moment. I thought all oh, the summer, the summer had um, started. So let's see, let's see what the wheat brings us. So another foam pad just to give a little bit more height, and I'm going to put him a little bit of a wonky angle just to finish him off. There you go. It's a really um, fresh card, isn't it? Really summery colours as well. This one. So I thought that were a nice way of um, just bringing that full background stamping and that new ink colour. I think it really goes well with it. It's kind of like, it just shows you, you can like pick your favourite colour and theme a card around it. So, good bit of fun there for us. And I'll just bring in the other card that we made earlier. Get them both together. So, two different cards there. One with the moving element, which is the wiper thing, which is really cool, isn't it? The way that we can have that pop of element there. But it's also two good projects that you can have a go to with at home and use the projects you've got. So hope that's give you some inspiration for our collection. Um, and I hope it gives you some confidence to have a go yourself. Uh, you have to post your pictures of what you make. It'd be nice for you to see them. And if you've got any questions, just get, drop us a line. I will reply to you. So thanks very much for joining me again um, on this Monday afternoon. And I'll see you again next time next week. So see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>